You want to know what Facebook and Tencent can do to win their business model race. We looked at two alternatives. You could expand your rev you could expand your user base and grow your revenue by volume, or you could diversify your revenue streams and leverage your user base to promote other products. Ten cents, we believe that expanding your user base and growing your your volume of customers would be a great option. For, for Facebook, diversifying your revenue streams and promoting other products would grow your revenue, revenue streams and allow you to reach that win. Okay, so I just want to give you a quick breakdown between the two companies. So if you could direct your attention onto the projection here. If you see that, we have two columns, Facebook and Tencent. So, what do these companies do differently? Well, if we take a look, Facebook is a social networking platform. However, it is uh, everywhere but China, I, uh, North Korea, and Iran. On the other hand, Tencent is Asia's biggest internet company and holds most of its customers in the Chinese market. Let's go to the second point. What companies have they acquired or what companies do they own? For Facebook, they own Instagram, WhatsApp, and Oculus Rift. What does this mean for them? It means that they have control over these platforms. Let's talk about Tencent on the other hand. What does Tencent own? They own WeChat, QQ Messenger, QQ Games, and a bunch of more QQ uh, platform services. That being said, let's analyze the regulation. Facebook faces regulation from the US government. And from what we know, it's quite strict, and uh, privacy is a big issue in the US market. That being said, for Tencent, it does well in China because the government supports their endeavors. Chinese government has a much more uh, lenient privacy towards their company in allowing them to use their data collected from their customers. And this is something that we've learned. So this is just to give you an overview of the differences and similarities between companies. Now looking to an analysis on the revenue streams for the specific companies, Facebook's revenue streams is heavily maintained on ads. You can see that their mobile ads take up 82% and their other payment services for games, private chats, and uh, business chats only take up about 3%. So the key takeaway here is that your that Facebook's revenue streams are not diversified at all, and they are solely based on they are solely based on ads. And the crucial key to this is if you want to grow your revenue, you actually have to grow your user base. Doing an analysis on ten cents revenues, their major player is their gaming and social networking which takes up 74%, and their online ads only produce about 20%. The key takeaway to this is that they are diversifying their revenue streams, but they're very focused on their gaming industry and social networking, which means that if they want to grow their revenue streams, they need to grow their user base.
And so what this really all boils down to for both the companies is how does, or sorry, what could each of these companies uh, do to win this business model race? Right now, we're seeing that uh, Facebook and Tencent are main competitors, so they're at the same, about the same. So let's take a quick look at alternatives. Uh, so we've developed two alternatives in both increasing uh, <coughs> uh, consumers by growing your user base, as well as diversifying the revenue stream. So let's take a look at what both of these mean. So in order to grow your user base, that means that you're going to be increasing your revenue through volume. So that means by acquiring more customers, you'll be uh, retaining more consumers, and in the end, you'll be profiting off of um, the investments they make to your company. In terms of diversifying the revenue stream, that means you're leveraging your existing consumer base and providing them with new products to purchase. And that's how you'll be providing, that's how you'll increase your revenue stream. So, for Facebook, the alternatives here are to enter the China market and grow your user base, or diversify by entering the gaming industry and diversify via revenue stream. When we look at an external analysis, we see that the geopolitical uh, environment wouldn't really help uh, Facebook enter China. We see that there's strict Chinese internet censorship, um, and that could be an issue, especially considering that the majority of ad, uh, the majority of revenue for Facebook comes through advertisements. So there's website blocking and limited cooperations, which wouldn't really, which would hinder the growth that Facebook is uh, looking to achieve. And there's also uh, ambiguous uh, political environment. Um, and several companies that are based in the U.S. who have tried to expand into China have failed even uh, after cooperating uh, with um, the Chinese pools. So examples include Uber and Airbnb. So we don't see um, um, entering the China market as a feasible option due to these restrictions. However, we do see that entering the gaming system, uh, the gaming market, would be profitable to the business. As you can see, um, the AR and VR, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, reality uh, markets are increasingly, are growing increasingly fast. And as you can see, um, augmented reality and um, is growing faster than virtual reality. And so our key takeaway from that is to focus on AR development in terms of gaming. So from that, we uh, lead game into our recommendation for Facebook. For Facebook, we recommend acquiring a uh, company that currently is a player in the augmented reality field, uh, which is King Game. And so by acquiring this company, you will be able to leverage their expertise uh, and integrate that into Facebook's platform. We also, through that uh, acquisition, those augmented reality games could be integrated and therefore provide an additional diversified source of income for Facebook to utilize and grow. So in terms of a timeline for this, in year one, uh, Facebook should have focused on acquiring the company, so going through all of the negotiations in order to do so. From year two to four, the development of the games would be uh, in the process, and then the integration with the Facebook platform through the Messenger, uh, as well as Facebook's other uh, applications uh, will take place. And then in year four, it's important to, now that this is integrated, to promote this, to let customers know how this will be uh, accessible for uh, the consumer. So looking at a little bit of financials, we believe that King Gaming is a little bit of a smaller company, and acquiring this company could be approximately around 20 million dollars for Facebook, and we think that the operational cost of developing AR games would be about $3.5 million to run King Gaming. And so we believe that Facebook currently could acquire a bank loan and pay for this, uh, pay for the large payment of $10 million. We believe that we, we believe that Facebook for the first year would pay about $3.5 billion, which is currently a uh, little under what uh, Facebook is profiting around, and then for the next four years, pay off uh, the loan for $3 billion uh, payments, roughly. So a little under what its Facebook's current revenue streams are providing. So with this additional company, 
you could easily make those payments and profit even more in the future. So in terms of risks, so what happens if we aren't able to acquire um, King Games? Um, and it may happen. Well, the great thing about um, acquisitions is there are a plethora of gaming companies that uh, Facebook could have to acquire. So our medication for that is you can acquire uh, another gaming company such as NetEase or Warner Bros. And it'll give you that um, ease of mind that there are um, other ventures that you could invest in that will result in the same, um, that will lead you to the same results of diversifying your revenue stream. We also want to promote this really well 
So about $10 million with a variety of booths, advertisements on campus, and utilizing uh, uh, student ambassadors. We believe all this might cost uh, roughly around $10 million. So for the second year, about 21, 21, 26.5 million. million. All right, so looking at some risks that Tencent might face. So the first is access denied at the university. So what happens if university vendors or university campuses are hesitant on allowing uh, Tencent and WeChat to be used at their local vendors? Well, if that were to occur, we would recommend that you uh, look into places that university students frequent. So coffee shops, uh, school supply stores, um, anywhere that there's a heavy population of that target audience that we're trying to um, have use WeChat. The second and um, a really big risk that we might face is tariffs on um, Tencent entering the United States. As we know, President Trump um, has a few ideas of what he would like to impose in, in regards to tariffs and restricting trade. So if that were to happen, because we're focusing on North America as a whole, we'd recommend that if that were to occur, you would focus on Canadian markets and Mexico. Uh, you would still be capturing a North American market, but it wouldn't be the whole North American market. So let's go through an example. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, rewrap this up. So for we started out today talking about Facebook and Tencent. Now they were very much going, growing in different paths. And what we believe they need to do is actually copycat the other one and then use similar traits from the other's perspective. So for Facebook, we believe that they need to diversify the revenue streams and copy something similar that Tencent has really developed and really mastered in going into that gaming industry and use their enormous customer base to, to promote their new games, to promote their new games and get additional payments from customers from these games. On Tencent's hand, we want them to grow like grow like Facebook. Facebook has many different platforms that allows people to share their lives and share different ways. Tencent also has great platforms which allow them to incorporate their, their social media into day-to-day -day life. Through payment services, this is really crucial and this can be utilized to help out them grow their revenue streams by growing their, by adding value to actually downloading their, their WeChat and utilizing it on university campuses. We'd like to thank you very much and open the floor for questions. market is very influential in terms of a world expansion strategy. 
And so because uh, WeChat and Tencent is looking at going internationally, it needs to kind of follow what Facebook has done in terms of going globally. And again, the U.S. is a very influential market. When people hear something is popular in the U.S., it has more of a, of a power to influence what other countries, including countries in Asia, are in, more interested in because of the media proliferation. So. This is a Canadian bias on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cool. Where is the biggest, biggest use of it? It's Asia. Okay. It's way, way more than North America. So I think you you're using a bit of a Canadian North America bias out there. Okay, and I think Connie is right. You have more Chinese origin population in Asia, so where do you think it could grow faster? Okay. But uh, very good uh, analysis. I think your analysis was fabulous and very concise. Okay, uh, what do you think is the biggest problem Tencent is going to face? I mean, you, you, you made a very good point out there about Tencent's initial growth has been in terms of a closed market where the Chinese government allowed them. How prepared do you think they are to go into an open market? Do you think their services will be, um, are, are they prepared to launch their services in a market which has different regulation, which has different restrictions? Have you done any thought, have you made thought on that? Thank you for the question. So I think there's kind of two ways to look at this. So. Right now, they have a lot of free uh, freedom in China because China really supports local businesses, right? But there is still that, you know, that air of censorship that still happens uh, even with WeChat and Tencent. So entering a new market, they might find more freedom to perhaps even expand on other revenue bases. So, for example, ad revenue isn't really one of their largest components, but it could expand if they were to enter a new market because they would have more of a freedom to um, advertise and they wouldn't have to deal with those restrictions of blocking. However, they would need to adapt a little bit to um, financial regulations through the U.S. Um, government, and they would have to make sure that what they're presenting um, fits into those regulations. So there is going to have to be a little bit of a give and take. They're going to gain a little bit more freedom, but they're also going to have to give a little bit to those restrictions. But like we said, we think that if they are planning on winning this global race, it, North America is a market that they'll have to enter, and so regardless, they'll have to face those regulations when the time comes. You know, we are from the banking industry. So far, I have not heard any comments on whether this two company will benefit or lose in the continued development of fintech. Do you want to add in that? So let me just ask this question back to you and make sure I understand it before I answer it. So you want, uh, so essentially, how are these two companies going to benefit from fintech? Or lose. Or lose. Mm. Yes. All right. So um, in regards to the United States, by diversifying their um, their revenue streams, they really aren't really investing in fintech, they're more investing in gamification and AR. So they won't really benefit nor lose, um, they'll kind of maintain a neutrality. Um, in regards to um, Tencent, um, again this goes back to regulations, right? So the United States may have uh, more strict regulations, but we're also recommending they enter Canada and Mexico, and the regulations there might fluctuate as well. So depending on the regulations that they face, as well as the markets they're planning on growing into, um, their investment in fintech, because we know WeChat, one of the biggest things is the payment method, and um, we know that there might be regulations in that in the United States, but like I said, um, those regulations are inevitable, and so having, they may lose a little bit by, by increasing their market share, they will be able to make that up. Mm. Does that look to answer your question? You mentioned one of the strategies to for Facebook is to acquire a game company. Why are you alternatively not recommending Facebook to acquire a fintech development company? If if that's the case. The question is why why continue only on gaming? Yeah. Because yes, uh, for Tencent gaming is big, but they also have, like you said, they've um, integrated WeChat with multiple so they made it not only a social thing, they've made it a whole integrated platform. Yeah. Uh, Facebook has that, mm -hmm. this thing. Why not suggest that to move, make, make it from a social platform to a more integrated platform? Yeah, so I think that when we were doing our analysis and we looked at, at Facebook, we saw that Facebook's wallet, they actually tried to introduce this and it actually failed on them. We believe so that- Why did it fail? 
why did we believe that it failed because of the premise of how people associate what Facebook is. Facebook is more of an, uh, a, a social networking and it doesn't really have that security and that privacy that you want when you're paying stuff do you, for do stuff. Do you think it failed also because there are much stricter regulation in the countries they operate? I, believe, I, I think that's also a consideration. I, I personally believe that it's due to the, the fact that what, the what is association, have. yeah, the image of Facebook and how people associate with Facebook. And that's why we went with the gaming industry because that's more relative to the social networking side of it because people nowadays are more likely to game online with friends than alone. Back in the day, it was very much you would play a campaign mode where you were with individuals. Now it's you are a group of people, and having a user, having a large user base, would really leverage that, and then, and it could go into that industry and diversify your platform. This alleviates a lot of the pressure that Facebook is currently having onto growing the revenue streams. Is they need to grow the revenue, uh, their user base. That's not even their strategy at the moment. I mean, if you see their virtual reality. They're not going towards the gaming industry. They're going towards augmenting the experience that you get through social networking. Uh, your suggestion is very different from what part uh, the founders of Facebook have set themselves on. They want to use virtual reality and augmented reality, but not from a gaming point of view, but more from an increasing the experience of social uh, um, uh, interaction. Uh, so why do you think they will have a competitive advantage? Yeah, so if I can just add on to John's point. So I think the reason why we've chosen to go with gamification rather than um, suggesting that, you know, virtual or augmented reality on their social networks is because if you do augmented reality on social networks, you're not really diversifying what you're doing, correct? So you're still on that social network, you're still relying heavily on ad revenues. You may increase a little bit through the augmented reality of the social network, but looking at the revenues you would gain from games, that's a completely different revenue <coughs> stream. And so that would produce more funds and more revenue for the company. And so although it might not be the path they're taking now, the path that they're taking now is very consolidated in what they do, the products that they offer. So by us suggesting this different recommendation, it's really to diversify and make sure that they are covering a lot of different bases. I have a last question. Uh, both companies are similar sizes, right? Yeah, never knew that profit. 10 billion for Facebook to invest, 30 million over two years for Tencent. Strategy doesn't look a little lopsided. Yeah, so that that, that is uh, a great point. It's, it's a little different because of the user base. Currently, uh, Facebook has a large user base on various platforms, and that's why it's going to cost a lot more to enter a new market, a new industry, versus for versus for ten cents, you have a lot less barriers for cost to grow that user base. It's more on promotion and more on services that I think are even going to look like a strategy for them for a company that has a revenue stream of what twelve billion. Is 30 million 10 billion revenue yeah, 10, 10 billion revenue is, 30 mil, is 30 million even going to look like any massive strategy for them? I'm, it, I'm sure their marketing budgets are much larger than that. In, in marketing terms, for 10 million for getting into the campuses, this is just a first stage to get into that market and grow on a specific de a demographic. After that, we totally recommend it bumping up that promotion to access a whole way, wide range of demographics. But for a specific demographic as university students, 10 million seems about roughly a portion of to that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time.